Oh, well, well, it's kind of cloudy this afternoon, but I thought I would go down and see the cows. Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I got some animals to take care of this afternoon and a few things to talk about. Oh, they see me coming down. Patty's in the lead there. She's going to yell at me. Can you see how colorful these leaves on the maples have become? We've had a few frosts now, and it's really starting to liven up. Even these uh, sumacs are starting to turn their really deep red. I really like that. Whole woods is looking very interesting. What do you want, Patty? Oh, everybody's coming up. They were all laying down when I was up top. <laughs> you guys are all lined up, aren't you? <laughs> How are you guys doing? You guys have worked over this pasture pretty good. Yeah, you got lots of stuff to tell me, don't you? That sound that you hear is a generator going on my neighbor's soybean bin. He doesn't have electricity to it, so he runs a generator to run the fan and the dryer. He started combining. You guys are all looking really good. You're all lined up like you want to go someplace. I celebrated my, well, I didn't really celebrate, but it was my 54th birthday this week. And I don't know, we're not much for celebrating those kinds of things. And as I've gotten older, my birthday has become less of a special day. But on the same day as my birthday, a, co a previous coworker of mine when I was an architect died. And she was only, I don't know, she was like 35 years old. And it really got me thinking about things all week long. Hi, Titus. How are you doing? You're looking good. You are. Hi, Orton. You guys are still keeping your distance from each other, aren't you? Orton's over, Titus is over here and Orton's stepping off. Oh, somebody's having a meal. Hey, Coco. All right, you guys, I can move you. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to spend all their day yelling at me, so we might as well get this over with. Come on, cows. Let's go. Let's go. Hustle it up. <laughs> You guys sure do have a lot of funny business. You're all lining up. Come on, let's go. Let's move it along here. I ain't got all day. We're going to let them raid into this field, which is adjacent to the one that they were on. <laughs> the one nice thing about Patty is she's very predictable. I'm going to come out here and she's going to yell. All right, guys. That'll keep them quiet for a while. They gotta explore their new pasture. The young woman that died from my former office was just a super person and it reminds me that the best ones always seem to go first. The other thing it reminded me of is when I was in my old job, I enjoyed most of all working with the youngest people in the office, some of the people that had just come out of school because I was all about change and changing the profession and changing the way we think about design and all that kind of stuff and for better or worse I found the young people were a lot more receptive and adaptable and flexible when it came to change and I appreciated that but I realized this week as well that I haven't really changed in 10 years 10 years Titus what are you doing It reminds me of the Pink Floyd song, Time. And then one day you find 10 years have got behind you. I left my job 10 years ago, just about. 
I just love to watch you guys eat. What is this funny business with the calves? <laughs> There's always entertainment out here. And then we've got this guy who's nursing from the danger zone. That is not advisable, little buddy. You're in for a world of trouble nursing from back there. He don't care. I haven't really traveled to speak of in 10 years. I used to travel all over the country. And the only time I ever see the public is when I go to the farmer's market every week. And it's cool to see the public and talk with folks. One day I was talking to a guy from New York City and I said, oh geez, I used to love to go to the city. I used to go two or three times a year. And he said, oh man, has it changed in 10 years. And here I was thinking, no, New York's the same. It's the same as it was when I used to go. I guess it's not. I quit following the news probably six years ago and just because it was so darned infuriating but I have not a clue what's going on in the outside world for the most part. The colors of fall are just amazing around here. Bright red berries, these vines are turning. We've got to head back up top. When I was a kid, one of the things I resolved to never do is stop changing. I saw people and it, they'd be at various points in their lives and you could tell they were locked in some specific point in time in their life. You know, their clothes quit changing, their technology stopped changing, they stopped learning new things. And for me, change is growth and change is learning new things and change is always being a better person and to stop doing that, to become static, you know, clothes freeze. I could still have my mullet from the 80s if I were in my 50s and the 80s. I never wanted to be that way. And looking at the last 10 years, I wonder if I have. Now, I developed this kind of theory as part of the philosophy I worked on in my old job that change equals time. So the way that we mark time is by the change that happens during time. So if I'm standing here as my 54 year old self and I look back 30 years, the way I measure those 30 years is the way I was 30 years ago. How young I was, how much hair I had, what I knew, what I didn't know compared to me today. If I don't change from where I am today, it's a kind of timelessness. It's like time stopped. And so for the people that would drag their feet in the mud when it came to change in my old profession, I would make that argument to them that we all need to keep changing. Technology, culture, fashion, all those things moving ahead. That's what keeps life vital. Howdy, pickers. What are you guys up to this afternoon? You've become very friendly pigs. What do you got a piece of bark you're chewing on? You're all giving me the big sniff. What do you guys say we get you something to eat? Pigs always like to eat, don't they? Yeah, you back there. I saw you nodding your head. Oh, let's get those guys something to eat. Pigs your way over there, the food is here. Here's the food. Here they come. You guys are getting big. You know, on Monday, I put up a video. It was the Bulls annual competition for dominance and YouTube demonetized it for a while. It was up and then they said, nope. And so I appealed the decision. It's like working through the court system. You gotta, I was up at the third level before they finally agreed 
that it was okay to show. And my argument was this is animals expressing their nature. This is nothing different than what you see on National Geographic all the time. And to add to those thoughts I was having this week, I was thinking, you know, things have really changed since I fell out of the loop. For instance, people's attitude toward how you keep animals. You know, I, I'm a big believer in having animals express their nature, but sometimes I get feedback that leads me to believe that animals, that people, some people think animals should be kept in this kind of antiseptic environment, you know, perfectly clean stalls and, you know, animals all clean, no mud on them, and I'm thinking, you know, that's not, that's, that's, that's kind of an industrial version of farming. It's not what I think is correct for the animals. And I run into it with, you know, I was big into environmentalism when I was an architect, and to me, burning wood is one of the best energy sources you can have, burning firewood, because if you know anything about the carbon cycle, you're keeping carbon that's above the ground, above the ground, you're not mining it up. So wood is a renewable resource. Well, wood seems to have fallen out of favor now. Not in this area, this is a big wood burning area, including with the environmentalists in this area. But in general, this movement toward electricity, which I thought back when I was on that leading edge of environmentalism is a pretty poor energy source. Centralized electricity is a pretty poor energy source because there's a lot of waste at the power plant and transmission, you know, point of use. And now everybody's saying, oh, we need to change this all to electricity. I feel like I've really kind of <laughs> lost <laughs> what, what, where everybody else is here because uh, I'm doing things the way I think is environmentally best, but apparently the world has changed. I don't know. And then working on old tractors, you know, my gosh, it used to be that when I needed a machine shop work, it was the next town over. Now I had to drive three hours between two machine shops to get the work done that I needed. Nobody's rebuilding stuff the way I do anymore. Or hardly anybody is. When something is bad, say a, a, an engine head on a car goes bad, they get a new one and they throw out the old one, they don't fix it. Feel like an anachronism. The world just doesn't seem to value taking care of the old things anymore and I feel a little out of place in it. Hey, Brownie. Hey, John Boy. You guys gotta have some food and water. Some for you, Red. Some for you, John. There you go. And Miss Brownie. She's a tail wagger. Here's a sign of change. Hillary and I butchered the last batch of broiler chickens for this year, this morning, to bring fresh to market tomorrow. Now it's just turkeys and stew hens. Then we're wrapped up for the winter. Afternoon, turkeys. You guys are getting big. Turkeys are always so friendly, curious. Right, guys? Your snoods are hanging down, all you toms. They're really giving me the eyeball. I don't blame them. So where does that leave me, or maybe even other people my age? Because at 54, you're too old to be young, and you're too young to be old. <laughs> I didn't come to any conclusions, and I'm throwing this out there to see what you think. I am a big believer in continual change and self-improvement and uh, helping others do the same. You know, not, not maybe not leading others, but showing them the door. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. It's something to chew on. I'll see you next time. Right, turkeys? I agree. <laughs>